My name is Jeff Kaler. I am the Technical Director at New Hertz Technologies, and I would like to talk about some work we did recently with defected microstrip structures, commonly known as DMS resonators, which are an aid for the suppression of spurious mode in some types of filters, hairpins being included in those types. And you will see here on the uh, PowerPoint slide some axiom layouts of what a DMS resonator looks like. If you can imagine for a second that this is a coupled resonator in, a, in between two hairpin legs, everything is normal except we see some gaps that are cut out. And these gaps have the effect of producing a notch filter effect in the hairpin. And if these gaps are tuned to the spurious frequencies of the hairpin that we want to eliminate, they are very useful in notching out, so to speak, the spurious modes. Now here is a traditional hairpin, and this one has been optimized using Microwave Office. And you can see that it looks very, very nice here in the passband. We have a S11 optimized, everything below 20 dB. And if you look closely, we see an S12 optimized optimizer goal here and here, and everything looks very nice. And over here, we see the spurious mode, which depending on our design application, we may not want. So the way to, a way to remove this spurious mode is to apply the DMS resonators, which will put notch filters about the spurious frequencies and hopefully eliminate them down to an acceptable attenuation. And over here, we will see the AWR project. And here is the actual microwave office AWR project where this hairpin has been minimized. Here is the layout and the AWR schematic and the optimized frequency response. Now here we go again with exactly the same hairpin that has been optimized, no change to the um, basic schematic. But if you look at the layout, we see DMS resonators installed where we, we used to have straight lines installed. And each of these DMS resonators produces a notch effect. And if we look over here at the schematic of the frequency response, we do in fact see some notching over here in the spurious modes, whereas we used to see a almost full minimal attenuated uh, hump over here. So we see some improvement right away simply by installing the DMS resonators. Now the downside, of course, is the frequency response that used to look very, very nice no longer looks very nice. The DMS resonators do have a uh, resonance at a different frequency where we want the hairpin hump to be, and that does get messed up, necessitating further optimization, which AWR is very adept at doing. Therefore, we're going to use AWR to restore the frequency response because the DMS implementation is primarily an optimization problem. And if we can look over here, here it is here. We see the AWR project with the DMS resonators installed and the frequency response. And you can see the actual schematic for the resume resonators. If I pull one up here, they're very complex. Uh, we don't need to, to dissect these and how they're made other than to point out that they make these nice DMS structures. And we'll show you one right here. Okay, now we've taken the same filter and we've run it through the AWR optimizers again. And two things happen. The passband gets restored by the AWR optimizers and New Hertz has installed a new S12 optimization goal over here at the spurious mode. 
and we can see that the spurious frequencies have now been reduced dramatically all the way down to 40 dB with very, very few exceptions. Very simple process, just export with the DMS resonators installed, run the AWR optimizer, sit back just a few minutes, and you eventually get this response for your DMS resonator hairpin. Now we can see that we're not perfect. We still have an S11 divot, and this was random. It simply came up in the process of design. Other designs are going to have other imperfections that these optimization goals are not necessarily set up to handle. This is normal. The default setup of the optimization goals doesn't do everything for you. It simply gets you off to a very good start. And if you're lucky, it might do everything for you. Now, in this case, this S11 divot may be a problem, depending on the on your design requirements. If it isn't, leave it alone, you're done. If it is a problem, then of course, Microwave Office is very flexible with user optimization goals. All we need do is install another optimization goal right here. And this was installed by hand. Uh, it's just very easy to do in Microwave Office. We wanted to get rid of this divot or perhaps something else that we don't like. Maybe it was a higher resonant mode, which we can also do. It's install this goal so that S11 will be above, and I think this is set to 1 dB. Run the optimizer again, and then the divot goes away. And we can see down here our S12 goals still look very nice, but we do see some slight degradation as a result of the S11 that we got rid of. Trade-off for everything. And if we go to, and here we go to the final AWR project where you can see the optimizer has been run. Um, here's the optimization control panel here. We ran the optimizer with this goal that was set by hand. Here's the schematic. These are the DMS resonators. And if we look closely, we can see that these are, are not standard AWR components. They are, in fact, sub-circuits that house the DMS resonators. And here is the layout for the full hairpin with the DNS resonators installed and this nice frequency response, which we'll restore right here. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of New Hertz Technologies DMS resonators with AWR's microwave office.